Hey, hey, hello everybody and welcome back to CWK Live. Now on Monday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time for the next few months. Great to see all of you. I'm your host, Dan Zare. So excited to talk some Star Wars and the Bad Batch. Let's bring in our friends who join us on CWK Live. Mary Purdue is here. Happy Monday, everyone. Mary, great to have you back on the show. Minta has returned. Minta, this is the way it's CWK Day. Hello, Minta. Great to have you. Adam is here. He says, hello there. By the way, great profile picture, Adam. It says, apologies for my absence. I've been partaking in some appointment viewings of the new Shogun series with friends from the Tuesday time slot. Hey, no problem, Adam. Great to have you back on the show. We saved you a seat. David is here. Uh, hello. Happy Monday to you, David and Robert. Happy CWK Day to you. And look who else is here. It's our good friend, Blake. Happy, hey, CWK fam. My list is short snap. I made it after a long day. Well, Blake, it's great to have you, buddy. Always good to see you. And Jason's here. Hello there, Jason. Jason helped us break down Juggernaut last week on Coffee with Kenobi and did a great, great job. Great to see you again, Jason. Nick is here as well. Happy CWK Day, Nick. Awesome to have you. And Liberty's here. Hey, hey, Liberty. Hello there. Brian, this is the Monday. Great to see you. Boy, we've got a lot of our wonderful friends here. So nice to see all of you on the show. Uh, we've got a new friend, Matzo from Illinois here. Hello, Matzo. Great to have you as well. And as you know, this is broadcasting live on Coffee with Kenobi's YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, and on x.com. So if you're on any of those places, Please share and tag us, spread the word that you're watching the live show, experiencing all this now so we can all enjoy Coffee with Kobe Live and talk about some stars as our amazing community always, always does. So let's look at our topic for tonight, naturally. It's our top five moments from Star Wars, The Bad Batch. The episode is Juggernaut. Darren is here. Hello, Darren. Great to have you on the show. More Orbesh lessons and your comments and questions. So let's go ahead and take a look. What is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week? All right, we've got, uh, we're going to jump into our Orabesh lessons. Yes, we're going to talk about Juggernaut naturally. But before we get to that, let's, let's go ahead and do some Orabesh. Hip, hip, hooray. It's Oribesh Day. So we uh, last week we did the, the letter S. So, of course, that is going to be the letter T. Let's take a look. Sarah is here, and she's back for her second CWK Live. I'm excited for my second list. Great to have you. Great to see you here again, Sarah. Let's do this. There's the letter A, letter B, letter C. There's D, E. If anything, we're going to learn the regular alphabet really, really well. There's the letter E, F, G, H, I, number one, the J, the K. And hopefully by now you're thinking of things that I think about, or at least you remember me uh, talk about them. These I use little cues to help myself remember these things. There's the letter L. Letter M looks like that muscle. The letter N is like um, an upside down V connected to like a half of a circle. You've got the letter O, which looks similar to an O, but it's um, um, ergonomically different. How about that? The letter P. Uh, I was trying to think of a way to think. I guess this is how I think of that letter P. Um, it looks like at the top, like someone's trying to pinch something. P for pinch and grab it like a little Lego. It all seems to be connected to Lego somehow. Got the letter Q, which looks like the beginning of an actual Q without the little tail. Then we've got the letter R, which is a 7, honestly. Then we've got the letter S, which is like an inverted V with a line on the bottom. And then now our new letter for the week is the letter T, which it looks like you just take the S and you point it straight down. Did you ever play that game Adventure on the Atari 2600? This, it was a great, it was like an 8-bit game, and uh, you're just this little square, and you'd walk around, and there was like three different kinds of dragons. There was a yellow and a red, 
and I think a black one. I think the black one was really fast, if I remember correctly, and there were different levels, but the sword on it was a little arrow like this, and that's what you would use for your weapon. You could trick the dragons into run to it. It was a lot of fun. I digress. So that was the letter T. It looks like the sword from the 2600 Atari game adventure, which probably most of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Some of you might. Some of you might. So there is your letter T. So just for fun, let's try this. This is impromptu. Get out a piece of paper and try to write your name in Oravesh. First and last name. Now there may be a few letters because of course we've got U, V, X, W, Y, Z. So I'm obviously not going to write the letter Z for Zare because I don't know the letter Z yet. But uh, try to write your name, first and last name, in Oravesh and see how you do. And I'll put the alphabet back up there. Jason says, I was just thinking about Adventure 2. I love that game. Sweet. Yes, it's so fun. Liberty says, my husband says the T looks like an anchor. It does. It does, in fact, look like an anchor. All right, let's see how we do. Let's draw. Draw. Let's write our names. Okay. Uh, oh, my gosh. I'm already kind of forgetting. Uh, and... Oops. Yeah. D A N and then Z. I have no idea. So I'm going to put a question mark when I don't know something. T E H. Let me think about that. I do think it's so fun to try these when you are actually writing out your name. But so for me, H H H. See, sometimes what helps is you can kind of go through the alphabet in your mind like we just did here. And that's how you can remember. Actually, I can't remember so many. Oh, wait. Now I remember the H. And then R. It was right before the S. A P is for pinch. R was a little bit different. I can't remember the R. Oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put up the alphabet itself, the full alphabet. And everybody can kind of grade themselves. There we go. All right, there it is. So there there it is. See how you did. I'm going to give myself a grade. I got my first letter right. I got my second letter right. I got the incorrect, although it doesn't look very good. <laughs> Liberty says your name is far too short. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, how do I do on the Z? I don't have a Z because I don't know that yet, so I'm not going to count that against me because, you know, I, we haven't learned it. The E, I did correct. The H, I got right. And the R, I couldn't remember. Now I'm looking at the R. Oh, it's a seven. Rats. Rats, rats, rats. So I missed one. But mine, as Liberty pointed out, mine was only four letters. So, you know, I it was um, a little bit different for me. Uh, a little bit easier. Uh, but how did everybody else do? How did everybody else do? Again, I, I really think I just got to give myself more quizzes. And I'll, I'll be honest, um, I feel like I haven't been able to put as much into the lessons lately. And full disclosure, in complete honesty, uh, this is like the last couple of weeks of this grad school class I'm taking. Uh, that is taking up a lot of my time, as it should. So that typically is where I've been putting my spare time. So I apologize for not putting more into the lessons. I do think that they are fun. I do think they are helpful. And it's still requires us to keep on practicing as with all things that's the main way to get better jason says he got seven out of nine so jason very good very well done very well done how did everybody else do you can be honest and if you're not sure or if you haven't been following along that's okay too it's still fun to just get that through. as i've said before whenever i'm watching bad batch now i'll pause it and i'll try to read things on the little readouts and on the screens in the episode and Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm not, but it's a blast. Mary says, Chaz has an OT poster from our, our, from her, our universe. It is totally Norbesh. My goal is to translate. Now, see, that is cool. And I have, like, the, the spork bag from Galaxy's Edge, and I've been – now I can actually translate it uh, because we already have S-P-O-R-N-K, so that's fun. But it is a little bit different when you know everybody's watching you 
uh, do it and you're on the clock. But that's that's how you learn, right? That's how you learn. So pretty fun. Thank you for joining us on that. Let's go ahead and go into the, the main course for this evening, our top five. Tonight's top five is from Star Wars The Bad Batch Juggernaut. I heard, um, well, I don't want to say anything. I, I'm, I stopped myself. I stopped myself. Um, we're going to talk about The Bad Batch Juggernaut, an episode that kicks off a lot of important things uh, for the next couple of episodes. As you know, I've seen the next two, so I'm naturally not going to spoil anything because I would never do that. Um, but I, I'm looking forward... I'm looking forward to the future and, and future top highs for sure. Let's talk about Juggernaut, though. To me, this was a great uh, example of just classic Star Wars action. Look, I said this on the lot on Coffee with Kenobi this week with Jason and Mason. The Jason and Mason kind of rhymes. Not every episode is going to be in, incredibly intense and profound and advance the mythology deeply. That would be boring. That would be not authentic, in my opinion, just as a as a fan of stories and storytelling, because you have to create steps in that tier to to see where the adventure goes. I'm trying to be very careful about what I say. So it's all right. This was just classic Star Wars action, and I would argue there's some really good subtle character stuff here. So let's dive in and see what we come up with. Number five for me is Wreckers Humor. There are at least three or four times. There are three times that I can think of off the top of my head where Wrecker makes a great joke, uh, especially when he finds out they're going to be a, a, attacking that tank. Uh, he makes a number of jokes throughout the episode. Uh, he's just fun. He's a lot of fun. He's very, very... Uh, he throws in a lot of levity in, a, in some pretty intense situations. Because that turbo tank, I mean, it, it's serious business. Yes, we've seen them in The Mandalorian and in Rogue One. And I think it's cool to see that replicated. Because remember, this is the beginning of the Empire's reign. The beginning. Just like, well, Rogue One's more towards the end of, of the Empire's reign, obviously. So they have to come from somewhere. So seeing the origins of that is pretty cool. Record thinks it's pretty cool because he wants to take the tank down. And that, as well as, well as some other parts, are really, really funny and really, really entertaining. So I enjoyed that quite a bit. All right, let's see what everybody else has here. Number five for Mary, the Kiner's music at the end. I know I've said it before, but their music absolutely enhances these episodes. They do. I mean, they are dynamite. Absolutely, absolutely dynamite. Adam for five, Feast St. Crosshair has a sparkling personality. Now that's an, an element of humor that is not record ball, but that is pretty great too. I love that as well. Blake says, it felt like a Saturday morning cartoon. I didn't get a lot from it, but it was a fun ride, which is okay sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. It's just fun. It was fun. And there were some real costs there, too. I I said on the show this week, but I thought Wrecker was, in the for the second episode in a row, I was afraid Wrecker was going to to die because of that jump at the end. He was taking so long. And I thought, oh, no, here we go again. So there was some of that in there, which adds to the, to the kind of eek factor, if that's a thing. Robert's five. Take on a turbo tank? Exactly. This is the humor. This question would have had a much different implication coming from anyone but Wrecker. Yes, exactly. It's the person saying it. It's the context. It makes it so much more funny. Uh, let's see. Jason's number five. Stormtrooper one. Quiet as usual. Stormtrooper two. Hopefully next time we'll see some action. And then almost felt bad for these guys almost. And they were stunned. So, you know, it's okay. Darren's five. Another classic Clone Force 99 mission. Exactly. Number five for Liberty Fee's stealth landing. She's so good at landing her ship, it's like landings by Anakin. Oh, yeah. How about it? They should have a landing competition. Although Anakin's kind of in a different headspace now. But, yeah, that's that's a good comparison, Liberty. I like that. They both had the landing with style. Falling with style. Mita's five. Those poor stormtroopers. Little do they know the action is just around the corner. It's true. That made me giggle. Five for Brian. The awkward stare between Emery and Omega when Hemlock brings her back to the lab. We haven't brought up Omega and Emery yet, but that is a key aspect of this. Sarah's uh, first one is the title Juggernaut. Our guys, the Bad Batch, are a perfect description for a Juggernaut. Yeah, they are. That's true. I hadn't thought of it that way, but that is, that is correct. 
All right, let's go and jump into number four. Number four, I put barricade smash when Hunter is driving that turbo tank and they've got everybody and they're trying to make their escape. The Empire's hot on their tail. And then the barricades come up across that bridge. There goes the turbo tank and it is explosive. And these things come up and they smash through them. It kind of reminded me of like a classic 80s, like Sylvester Stallone or, or Arnold Schwarzenegger action sequence. They're going across the bridge. Things are exploding. It's this big, massive tank, almost like a like a Hummer to a degree, and it's crashing through. I just I just found that really thrilling. I saw the episode a number of times, and I just I really enjoy that part so much. It's it's really just kind of smashy, smashy, but it was still great. It was just fun action. It's almost like uh, when I was a kid growing up, they had monster trucks, and they were just these trucks with these huge, ridiculous wheels. And they would drive over stuff and smash stuff. And I always thought that was so much fun. And it, it kind of reminded me of that. So I, I really enjoyed the barricade smash. Again, kind of refreshing. Just so, like Blake said, so just kind of enjoy it for what it was. It was just entertaining. Number four for me to the Wrecker's timing on his humor. Definitely, I agree with that one. Mary's next one is Wrecker was in great comedic form. But when he had to jump to Fee's ship, I was worried about him once again. Yeah, me too. I thought, oh, geez, here we go. Poor, I don't want anything to happen to these guys. Number four for Adam, Strong Mando Season 2 vibes with similar vehicles in, in um, the base with a bridge. I, I love that aspect of it. I love the connectivity. Number four for Darren, the takeover of the Juggernaut, which was pretty exciting. Kind of like an A-team thing, too. Boy, lots of illusions now that I'm catch, thinking about it. Number four for Jason, Fee's stealth approach and Hunter's floating helmet as a free fall through the atmosphere, which is exactly what happened. Place four, I can't remember if it showed... Or not this week, so forgive me, but the whole child prisoner Emery is looking over reminds me of the facility this, the psychic kids from the anime classic Akira are held in. The more we see from that, the more intrigued I am. You know, that's a good connection. I also thought of uh, the newest season of Stranger Things as well. But yeah, I, I think that's a good connection, Blake. Very good. And I'm sure that influenced them. I mean, undoubtedly. So number four for Sarah Cross here, opening up about not wanting to return to Tantus and telling Admiral Rampart uh, they may know the coordinate, that he might know the coordinates. Crosshair showing vulnerability hit me. Yeah, so Sarah brought up something that I was alluding to earlier, but there's some great character stuff in here. We talked about it on the show last week, but there's some very subtle, nuanced character things with Hunter and certainly with Crosshair and a little bit with Omega. And I think it adds, it adds a lot to what's going on here in a very subtle, powerful way that doesn't hit you over the head. I'm going to get to more of my analysis of that later, but Sarah, thank you for setting that up. Brian's for Rampart's rescue, uh, mirrored the rescue of Jin in Rogue One. Exactly. Again, those callbacks or call forwards, really neat. Number four for Robert. Maybe it's just me, but I felt there were some visual references to Raiders and Last Crusade when the Bad Batch is driving the turbo tank and trying to lose his stormtroopers on top. No, yeah, I, I mean, I caught it too, Robert. Very much so. I thought more of Raiders with the the bushes or like the the all the leaves and the branches sticking out and when Nina Ann Jones is trying to ram the soldiers off and they hit it and they fall off. I very much thought of that. So yeah, that was pretty neat. Uh Liberty's number four is any friend of brown eyes is a friend of mine. Yes. Uh, I thought that might come up at some point. That was a that was a good line. Let's go to three. Three Rampart returns. I did not expect to see Admiral Rampart return. And I had to think about it for a second, about who he was. And then I was like, oh, wait, it's Rampart. And then he's got a great voice. And I really, I liked seeing him back. It'll be interesting to see what happens with him. But I like that call back, back from season. Um, he was such a big integral part of seasons one and two. And then we forgot about him because the emperor turned on him, as the emperors want to do. And he's, you know, been on this imperial work camp and... He's back, and he needs something from the Bad Batch. They need something from him. So I like that sort of odd couple thing, uh, which is pretty cool. So we'll see what happens there. It's a very classic trope in a lot of great stories and storytelling. Number three for Blake, Wrecker's Jump, even though I was 99.9% .9 sure he'd be fine. The fact that they can still instill that fear in me from text death, I like. Yes, exactly. As I say, as I said before, this affects me similarly to Rebels in that we don't know the future of these characters. You know, when it's Luke or Han, it's exciting, but you don't really worry because you know their fates. 
So anytime something happens with the Bad Batch, you get a little nervous because you don't know what's in store. So there you go. Number three for Adam. Speaking of Mando, both he and Tech have the same nickname, Brown Eyes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, good point. Uh, Sarah's three, Fee meaning crosshair. Any friend of Brown Eyes is a friend of mine. Sweet call back to Tech. A lot of people really like that part. It was fun. Uh, Minta is number three, Fee's master skill of landing ships. That is definitely a nice way to put it. I think Fee would appreciate that. Number three for Liberty, the tank versus tag scene was straight out of the A-team for me. Love that whole scene. Yeah, exactly. The A-team. So cool. Number three for Darren, Omega's back on Tanta is very surprising. Yeah, pretty scary too. Three for Robert, Wrecker's tossing Rampart onto the ship like a rag doll. Yeah, poor, well, I almost said poor Rampart. But I mean, I guess, you know, it wasn't exactly nice to the clones of the Bad Batch. So I guess karma can be tricky in the world of Star Wars. Three for Jason, a vulnerable moment between Crosshair and Hunter as Crosshair gripped his hand while talking about not wanting to go back to Tantus. Yes, another example of the great character stuff in this episode. Number three for Mary. Fee popping up from the hidden cavern. Does everyone know about this hidden cavern except our guys? Apparently. Hey, Smooth is here. What's up, Smooth? Great to see you, my friend. He says, hey, CWK family. Can't say, but I want to stop in and say hi. Looking forward to the last three episodes of Bad Batch. Should be an epic conclusion to an awesome three-season run. Here, here, and Smooth, great to see you again, buddy. Brian's number three from AZ. Do not shoot. It was good to see AZ back. And that was that was pretty good advice. All right, let's uh, let's go to number two. Actually, I'll tell you what. Before that, let's take a quick little break. I've got a trailer queued up for this week's CWK Pro. It was a fun show this week. CWK Pro is for members of the CWK Alliance. It's a great way to support me and Coffee with Kenobi. And you get access to over 300 podcasts, both video and audio podcasts. This week, we caught up on things we've been doing we did over spring break. I talked a little bit about my trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, Corey talked about some great new collectibles. And we had some fun. This is kind of a jump around of a couple of uh, different things. And it even includes Corey doing a little show and tell. So let's look at CWK Pour Over this week. We got a bowl of cereal. And we watched the latest episode yeah. of the x-men i'm holding up a couple oh, action figures here are these, is that the new is that the this new this is the new wolverine and the cyclops uh action cool. figures is but, it uh, hasbro x-men 97 yes sir are, that wolverine is fantastic my gosh those, yeah. figures, oh, they're, they're those wonderful. colors are gorgeous wait is that like Mar is it called marvel legends is that what their black series? marvel legends is the line of, of action figures but i've got a couple of these um i have a couple more sitting up there but i, I won't i won't grab them but um those are gorgeous, I've been man. Gracing my shelf just to, uh, because yeah. it's so iconic. I will say, inside the Capitol building, we saw the original head for the A Lincoln. Lincoln? Oh my gosh! Wow. For the Lincoln oh, Monument. Oh gosh, that's where you're going. Okay. <laughs> but Link, I'm just ignoring you. And Lincoln's Thank you. Lincoln's family. They, they he was there and there too. They, <laughs> Wow. wow, they're so old. The role of Dan there will be played by Corey Club tonight. <laughs> um, Corey Club, I tell you what. Yeah, that, that was a little bit of fun. The great thing about the video portion of CWK Pour Over is you get to see some of those visual things. Sometimes Corey will bring out action figures or I'll do an unboxing. There, there are a lot of fun things. But we have a good time. Corey Club, the co-creator of the show with me. And then, of course, Tom Gross, a longtime friend of Coffee with Kenobi. And we have a good time. We hope you will. Uh, again, you get access to weekly podcasts, and you're able to support me. Plus, 10% of your contributions go directly to St. Jude, which is, to me, the best part about the whole thing. All right, let's go to number two here for Juggernaut. Number two for me, I put book, book in. So I haven't personally in my list brought up Omega yet, but the beginning of this, You've got Omega and Rampart, and the end, you've got Omega and Rampart, and I think it's great because in the middle, sandwiched in this, you've got this incredible action sequence with the Juggernaut and Clove Force 99, but the beginning and the end are the emotional beats of the piece, the emotional sequences that evoke the pathos that remind us of what's at stake and the cost, the reason the Bad Batch is risking the next is because they want to try to figure out how to get to Tantus yet again because they want to rescue Omega and to get all the clones off of Tantus base that are held against their will. 
So you've got some great emotional beats there. And a little bit of terror, I would say, too. Mary brought up the music, and I think it does add to the emotions of the piece. So I really like the, the decision to do bookends of Omega, both the beginning, because you just saw her captured at the end of the last episode, and then here, seeing her get turned into the vault. So let's see what everybody else has for their number two. Uh, let's see. Darren's two, Omega using her training, noticing trooper placement. Probably memorizing the layout as she goes to the lasers. Ah, interesting observation. And Blake says, happy Dan got to visit my hometown of D.C. Blake. I don't think I knew that, pal. That's cool. We'll have to chat about that sometime. Number two for Mary. Emery seems very conflicted. When she tells Omega she is safe, Omega answers, am I? Oh, that line. That should have been my number one. Seems like every time Emery has interactions with Hemlock, she is very worried or concerned. I agree. I I certainly see that. But yet she never... She just, ah, she's so methodic and you almost wonder if she's like, like, why is she not being more aggressive and helping? What, what is keeping her from doing what she does? Number two for Minta, Rampart's return. Love it. Number two for Adam, record taking a moment to recall Plan 55, which I, I've watched it several times. I'm still not sure what Plan 55 is. Run a straight line and ricochet a blast. Maybe. I don't know, but it was fun. Liberty's number two, Emery's conflict is growing between her conflict and her unknown purpose as a clone. I can't wait to see where her story goes. Me either. Number two for Robert, Crosshair expresses vulnerability when he tells Hunter and Wrecker that Tantus wasn't a place he ever wanted to return to. Yeah, and then Ian does that thing with his hand as well. Number two for Jason Fee's references to tech, especially calling him brown eyes. Yes. Number two for Brian, Crosshair shooting the blaster from Rampart's hand before Rampart turns around, which was part of uh, Plan 55, perhaps. Number two for Sarah, the action scene in the tank. Close, stressful situations had me a little nervous, especially Wrecker's jump. Yay for Fee to the rescue. Nice, nice uh, outside helper rescue hero's journey moment. Number two for Blake, I brought out before how closely this episode was for me to the season two episode of Mando with the Juggernaut. I don't like how close it was to that episode. I always enjoy a more over-the-top animated version of live-action things. Okay, fair enough. That episode, uh, what is that? It was like the second to last one in season two, I believe. I believe so. All right, now it is time for our number one moment from Star Wars The Bad Batch Juggernaut. For me, the stealth landing. Look, it's a little thing, but... I really just got such a blast out of Fee doing her stealth landing and the way it was animated and orchestrated, how she put her feet underneath those what looked like two twin accelerators, even though it's not what they were, or maybe they were, I don't know. Um, and how she put her feet under them. She's pushing these buttons, kind of slides her hands across, and they slide in under the radar. She doesn't tell anybody to put on their seatbelts, which I found kind of funny. But again, that's fine with me because this is science fantasy, not science fiction. You're just supposed to go with it and have fun. And I and I did. I just thought it was it was great. It was thrilling. It was like a, a Star Wars roller coaster with real stakes, real stakes in the world of a, a Star Wars universe. So great stuff. Really, really thrilling. That's what I put for my number one, the stealth landing that some of you have already brought up. Number one for Adam, listen to the cool dulcet Bob Rosk esque vocal tones of Dr. Hemlock giving his Bond villain monologue. Now that, Adam is quite well said, my friend. Meet is number one, the conflict between Emery and Omega. Either their relationship will have a happy ending or a tragic ending. It's true. It is very, very true. Uh, let's see. Darren's number one, the return of Admiral Rampart. Now he, like Crosshair, was a good soldier following orders and ended up in jail. And he even mocks um, him for that. And look how it worked out. Robert's number one, anything? Stormtrooper, yep. Wrecker, that was a laugh out loud moment for me. Wrecker's got so many funny lines in this episode. Number one for Fee. Uh, for, for Fee. Excuse me, number one for Mary. Fee re referring to Tech by his name and saying brown eyes. She sits across her. Any friend of brown eyes is a friend of mine. Good old Wanda Sykes is the voice of Fee. Number one for Brian Stormtrooper. Anything? Wrecker, yep. And then, boom, goes the dynamite. Number one for Jason. Hunter's determined driving of the Juggernaut, a metaphor for the Batch's determination to rescue Omega, which is so fun. 
Number one for Sarah Emery telling Omega she's safe and Omega say, asks, am I? Also, learning some more about Omega and the experiments. She's a vital piece and then she meets the, the rest of the puzzle, the four sensitive kids. That's well said. And it is it is all a big puzzle piece. Uh, and it's all fitting together. Number one for Blake, Ramparts returned. Only because I love how well Bad Batch has tied almost everything together. Has it been perfect? No. I have thoughts. But how every episode of the series matters, I sincerely love and will miss it when it's over. Oh, me too, dude. Me too. It's 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 my second favorite animated series. Number one for Liberty, this episode feels so much like Mando the Believer. The Believer, yes, that's it. Which is still my favorite Mando episode. Wow. The Prisoner, Rescue the Tanks, the Suspense, so Star Wars for me. So much Star Wars. And so, so, so good. All right, well, if you come up with a number one, not only here, uh, but if you're listening to the show on the, your podcast feed after the air after the video airs live naturally on YouTube X and Facebook, I take the audio and I put it into the podcast feed so you can hear the podcast. But either way, if you think of a top five and you're listening now and you weren't able to join us live, that's okay. We still want to hear your top five. Please put them on the CWK Cafe, which is our Facebook group. I'll put the logo up there for anybody who who did not know that. There it is, coffeewithkenobi.com slash community for CWK Live, our Facebook group. We have the best time over there, and I think you will too. So next week, we're going to talk about your top five moments from the Bad Batch into the Breach, which is a Shakespearean reference, by the way. I mean, they seem to create that saying, but once more into the Breach, dear friends, uh, which is a really popular uh uh beginning of a monologue uh from Henry the Henry the Fifth, I believe. I believe that's right. Alright, now let's go and take a look at what's brewing in the world of Star Wars. Nope, nope, nope. Never mind. Never mind. I was talking Shakespeare and I suddenly started thinking about my day job. Let's uh, jump in to ask Dan Z. Boy, oh boy, uh, <laughs> uh, I am I'm so excited to uh, answer any questions you have about Star Wars, about the podcast, about Coffee with Columbia, all kinds of stuff. Plans for May 4th. I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, not all I can share, but one thing I am doing uh, is I'm, I'm making a pretty big presentation at a, at a major conference, an academic conference for Star Wars, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then, of course, so how many of you are going to do that Skywalker Marathon? I, I'm i thinking about it, but I don't know if I could stay in a movie theater all day. I just don't think I could, even for Star Wars. it's That would be very hard for me to do. Uh, but I, I I don't know how I could not go at least see The Phantom Menace. Uh, Mason's never seen The Phantom Menace on the big screen. It's one of his favorite movies, and I think that would just be such a thrill, especially on the 25th anniversary uh, Darren's on a scale of 1 to 10, being 10 being the easiest. How difficult or easy is it to come up with your own top five lists that are also short in number or words? Do you, you do explain your top five also. So that's a good question, Darren. I, I don't know. It's sort of a malleable scale. I would say it's usually about an 8 or a 9 for me. I watch them so many times. I write things down, so I look over my notes. Um, I will scroll through the episode if there's things I need to do. But sometimes there's stuff that's so good I'll write down. But obviously... There are things that I miss every week because I always uh, I see your lists that all of you make so beautifully uh, and so insightfully. And I think, oh, I wish I would have said that. So that's what I probably get about seven or eight, maybe a nine sometimes. Blake says he watched the new Fallout show last night. It was a really good start to a show. What's your favorite video game adaption to a film or a show? You know, I don't know. Favorite? I don't know. I, I liked I kind of like the first Tomb Raider, although it's been a while since I've seen it. So maybe it's not any good. I really thought the new Super Mario Brothers movie was excellent. I thought that was a blast. Uh, Mary says, I could not stay in the theater for 20 hours, not even for Star Wars. Yeah, it's just, it's a long time, man. I want to, like, you know, on the weekend, especially on a school weekend, I want to be with my family. And I don't think I could drag anybody in the theater that long. I, the longest marathon I did was I did the first four Indiana Jones films. It was way before they even had the idea of making Dial of Destiny. And, and that was great, but that was a long day. A long day. Great day. For a long day. Jason, have a great week as well. Uh, I do want to say on, on uh, DisneyStore.com, which used to be called Shop Disney, there's a lot of great Man of the Force stuff, a lot of great Star Wars products that are out there. 
So be sure to check that out. And if you ever go to the Heroes and Villains website, make sure you use the code COFFEE. You get 20% off your order courtesy of Coffee with Kenobi and Heroes and Villains. While we're doing the promos, I mean, come on, how could I not talk about this? The Disney Wish. It's happening. It's happening June 16th to the 20th. You can join me, hang out with me and my family. On the Disney Wish Cruise Line, we've got the Disney, we've got the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge. It's the second official trip from Coffee with Kenobi and Mouse Fan Travel. Last summer, we went on the Halcyon, and that was just the best. And now we're going on a Disney Wish. It's four nights, five days. Uh, it's just, I, I am so excited. I wish it was this summer. But the good news is, because it's next summer, we have time to save. Your full payment isn't due until May, or until, sorry, until March of 2025. So you've got time. You can get a no-cost, no-obligation quote at coffeewithkenobi.com slash Disney Wish. And you can go there, book with your Miles Fan Travel agent today. Just make sure you, you tell them you want to go with me. And coffee with Kenobi. There are other perks and exciting things happening in the meantime, so keep your eye open for that. Blake says, Love my CWK family, the best fandom online. All thanks for our main man, Dan. Oh, Blake, thanks, man. That's so kind of you. Uh, you know, I love this community, as you know, but you and everyone here are big, big reasons for that. Like, if it wasn't for you, I'd just be sitting here babbling, and my wife would say, What are you doing? Are you talking to yourself? And I would say, Um, I guess I'd probably say, Yeah, because I would be, but I don't have to. Because I've got all of you to talk stars with, and I'm so, so, so grateful for that. Sarah says, I'm loving the new Fallout, sh Fallout show. Also, you know, I've never played Fallout, as well as even seen it. But it sounds like I have to add to my list. Mary, have a great week. Enjoy Bad Batch. Larry says, can't wait for some Star Wars adult beverages with my CWK family on the cruise. I know, and, and Deanna's coming. I can't wait for you all to meet Deanna. It's going to be so fun. Not related to this, but I'm assuming, Blake, you've seen this too. But for the first time ever... Mason and I are watching the original Avatar series from Nickelodeon. Not the Jim Cameron, but Avatar The Last Airbender. And oh my gosh, like how great is this show? I got so many thoughts about Avatar. We'll talk about that another time. But I want to thank you again for joining us on CWK Live. I will see you next Monday. This week, uh, this week of course, we will talk about uh, this week on Star Wars The Bad Batch. We've only got a couple episodes left. Enjoy them. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be quite a bumpy and exciting ride. Thank you so much, everybody. Adam, thank you. And thanks to all of you again for joining me each and every week on CWK Live. Remember, this is a live podcast you're looking for. Thank you so much. <laughs>